How's it going, guys? So two points I want to make regarding this clip. The first is some of you will think I've made an erratum regarding these values. I haven't, okay? It's slightly unusual, but this is stuff I've, obser I've observed on 2CK and BME material. The second point is that when we discuss pre-renal, intra-renal, post-renal azotemia slash failure, this could easily be a lengthy fucking discussion, okay? So for some of you studying for step one, you're going to want a lengthy discussion. For those of you who are more uh, advanced in your prep for step one, as well as those studying for 2CK, you're going to want me to be concise. So I'm going to try to strike a balance here, okay? So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Links are down below. Now let's start the question here where we've got this 72-year-old man with congestive cardiomyopathy. He undergoes a transurethral resection of the prostate, a TERP for BPH. Three days following the procedure, he develops a fever of 103 Fahrenheit and, new, and a new onset 2 on 6 holosystolic murmur auscultated best of the apex. New onset murmur plus fever is, is uh, endocarditis till proven otherwise. Probably mitral regurge. You have somebody who wants you to know uh, gen, uh, any uh, genital urinary manipulation or catheter insertion. This guy had a TERP. Uh, increase the risk for enterococcus endocarditis. He's admitted to hospital, treated empirically with vancomycin, gentamicin, the latter, of course, being an aminoglycoside. And then he's got his uh, renal function tests. Blood urea nitrogen elevated at 35 milligrams per deciliter, normal should be under 20. Creatinine is elevated at 2.0 milligrams per deciliter, normal should be 0 0.7 to 1.2. Fractional excretion of sodium, you don't have to worry about normal range. It will be under 1% in healthy individuals. Uh, but here we have under 1%. So classically for pre-renal, intra-renal, post-renal, for intra, sorry, fuck my starting with intra-renal. For pre-renal, you're going to have a BUN to creatinine ratio that's greater than 20, okay? And a FINA that's under 1%. Now here you can see they contradict each other. You say, well, why the fuck would you have a FINA under 1% but a BUN to creatinine ratio that's under 20, okay? So... Pre-renal, greater than 20 for the ratio, FINA under 1%. Now for intra and post, you don't have to worry about uh, differences between the two in terms of values. What you need to know for USMLE is just BUN to creatinine ratio under 20, just not pre-renal, okay? So whether intra or post, don't worry about is under 15, 15 to 20, just under 20, not pre-renal, over 20, pre-renal. And then for FINA, under 1%, pre-renal, over 1%, not pre-renal, okay? So intra post-renal. Now, pre-renal causes of uh, azotemia, okay? Congestive cardiomyopathy, very important for US familia. If you have pump dysfunction from the heart, you're not going to perfuse your kidneys as well as you should be, okay? So the kidneys decrease renal blood flow. That can cause pre-renal azotemia, azotemia being uh, increased blood urea nitrogen. Diuretic use, okay, causing dehydration, very important, as well as vomiting, diarrhea, and NSAIDs, okay, decreasing renal blood flow, okay, you decrease uh, prostaglandin synthesis, uh, decreased diameter of afferent arterioles, okay, prerenal azotemia. Now, the reason BU and acranine ratio is greater than 20 classically in prerenal is if the kidneys are experiencing decreased blood flow, they think, fuck, we need to reabsorb water to compensate because we have low blood volume. That's what the kidneys think. So the kidneys are going to jack up urea and sodium reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule. Water follows urea and sodium. So BUN to creatinine ratio is high over 20, okay, because we we're reabsorbing urea and our fractional excretion of sodium under 1%. Well, if we're pulling the sodium out of the urine, okay, for water to follow it, then we have less sodium in the urine, okay? So that explains our normal values. For intrarenal, acute tubular necrosis, very fucking important, all right? So uh, due to aminoglycosides classically, okay? So acute tubular necrosis, obviously other things as well, like myoglobinuria, myoglobin is nephrotoxic, uh, IV contrast, okay? Acute ischemia, blood loss from surgery. As I said, this could be a lengthy fucking discussion. So acute blood loss, let's say from surgery, someone's lost a lot of blood or trauma, that's actually intrarenal, acute tubular necrosis. If it's longer term, like um, more subacute, we said decreased renal blood flow for something like NSAIDs, diuretics, these things don't occur instantly. They're more subacute to chronic, then we would have prerenal, okay? Long discussion, okay? But acute blood loss, acute tubular necrosis, intrarenal, not prerenal. And then postrenal stuff like uh, BPH, okay? Ongoing BPH. So even though he's just had a TERP. So looking at these values here, we say, well, how the hell do we reconcile considering they seem contradictory? 
it's been to my observation on a couple 2CK level uh, clinical mastery series, the NBME subject specific questions that FINA wins. Okay, so they might give you obvious pre-renal. They say diarrhea, vomiting, sunken orbits, okay, uh, uh, lengthy capillary refill, okay, a poor skin turgor. It's obvious uh, dehydration and pre-renal, and they'll tell you the FINA is under 1%, and then you look at the buinocranian ratio, and it's like 16, and you're like, wait, that doesn't make fucking sense. I thought pre-renal buinocranian ratio was supposed to be over 20. I agree, it is, okay? But I'm telling you that if they if they force you into a situation like this where you, where you have to choose between the two, you're going to go with FINA, all right? Um, that's what I've observed on 2CK material. So let's look at our answer choices here. Acute interstitial nephritis, wrong fucking answer. Uh, this is going to be due to NSAIDs, beta-lactams, or cephalosporins, classically causing eosinophils, white blood cells in the urine, a rash in about 50% of patients, all right? Uh, acute tubular necrosis, wrong fucking answer. This is from gentamicin. Now, whilst our buinocreatinine ratio is under 20, consistent with intrarenal, the FINA is under 1%, which, which is consistent with prerenal, FINA is going to win on USMLE. It's not my fucking opinion. It's what I've observed on NBME questions. Congestive cardiomyopathy is the correct answer because this is an important cause of prerenal. Our FINA is under 1% and uh, very important etiology, okay? emboli you say well i mean if you've got endocarditis you could get uh a vegetation launching off to the kidney i mean it's just a distractor okay slightly uh juicy answer there i don't know maybe like eight percent of you would think it and then you've got history of benign prostatic hyperplasia okay causing post renal i mean this guy's obviously had a recent terp uh but it's not the answer here our fina is under one percent okay now look as I prefaced at the start of this clip, some of you would prefer a lengthy discussion of all the pre intra post renal stuff. Some of you think I've already been too uh, lengthy and long winded. So I have to strike a balance between you guys uh, viewing my content. You know the deal. I'm going to continue making more stuff. If you like my content, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.